So I'm gonna ask you to hit that live this button. This blue button? Now. Yep, just be soft on it because that thing will rotate. All I right. think we're live. Not yet. So now we're live. Not now we're live. All right. Welcome to uh, the Alex the Real Estate Dude podcast, video show, whatever you want to call it. This is episode number seven, I always forget, of Working Alaska. We're with Tirsa Nelson. She does Wild Irish Promotions, uh, Come Fly with Tirsa, and multiple more amazing things that we are going to talk about. <laughs> um, if you can't catch this on live, it'll be on YouTube, LinkedIn, podcast, all the forms. Just look for it. Ready to jump into it? I'm ready. Okay, so let's start with where are you from and where'd you go to high school and where'd you grow up? Like all that stuff. Alrighty. Um, so I, I grew up in Michigan. I moved up here to Alaska when I was 12 um, okay. and actually graduated from Palmer High School. Okay, so you've yeah. been here for a while. Yes, Sport, I have. Are you a sports fan? Uh, not really. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Good thing, because you would be a Lions fan then, and I would feel bad for you. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> um, okay, what brought you up here? Was it like your parents? Yeah. Okay. My mom got remarried, okay. and um, the fella she married had a job up here, and okay. she came up to visit and just fell in love. Obviously, there's a lot to fall in love with up here. Right. Uh, so we made the move later that summer. It's always one or the other. Like, you either love it, or it's cool to come vacation here, but that's it. Nobody right. really hates that. <laughs> um, okay. So you got up here, you went. To, you lived in Palmer, mm -hmm. or you went to Palmer High School? Yeah. That's my favorite high school and I don't even know why. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just drawn to Palmer so much. Go Moose. <laughs> um, okay, in high school, were you like super entrepreneurial? Were you like a class clown? Were you a troublemaker? You're a troublemaker, weren't you? Well, <laughs> no, none of the above really. I didn't have any particular group that I hung out with. I was friends with everybody from the band geeks to the stoners to the okay. in-between kids um choir and choir competitions okay. were my probably my favorite part of high school okay do you still sing i do let's hear it i do oh, no no no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure uh, yeah right like here we go nice to meet you let's sing <laughs> right no i just um i just passed my auditions and joined the alaska sound celebration choir which okay. is the um, Alaska version of the Sweet Adelines, which is an international a cappella okay. uh, group. That's amazing. It is amazing. And so, are you going to like tour with them, or what's that? Like, is the ultimate or? goal. Um, they do regional competitions every okay. year and international competitions when okay. they're um, invited to them, which is almost always because they really rock. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of really good opportunity so to travel and sing. You're on an international acapella what is it a group or a team or yeah. how do you that's Fire. amazing yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is i'm super excited about it so so we're just we're gonna jump we're gonna jump into it and then go back and jump into it wild iris international um choir team come fly with tirsa i almost messed it up i almost <laughs> messed it up <laughs> man you how do you how do you manage it? How do you do it? Oh, we'll see. It all remains to be seen. Um, <laughs> a lot of this is new to me. The choir is new to me. Um, the travel is newer to me as well. And uh -huh. the choir was actually my inspiration for uh, the travel company Come Fly With Me by Frank Sinatra okay. is one of the songs that they do in mm -hmm. the four-part harmony, and it's magnificent. Um, so when I had this opportunity with, with the travel company, um, Come Fly With Me was just perfect it was just the most natural thing yeah. and um yeah I'm, I'm excited about all of it we'll see how all the pieces kind of coalesce and fit together okay so we're gonna get into that we're gonna let's go back and get more of your story but we're definitely <laughs> gonna talk more about your businesses and all that stuff and how you manage it and how you market it and all of that stuff because it's definitely a lot going on and I'm sure some of it helps each other out right absolutely like they bleed over into each other but we'll get into that later Palmer High School um did you graduate and you go to college, or did you graduate and start writing the business, or what's that next step after high school? Oh, I graduated and had a baby. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I had a little girl uh, just shortly after high school and got a job with uh, the optical shops at Walmart just as they were opening yeah. up up here. So that was my first real career okay. uh, was as an optician, and okay. I still, glasses are my favorite thing. They're my number one favorite accessory, and I have like 14 or 15 pairs of glasses, so. Okay. 
just first love. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shoes and glasses. They're always always on point, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. They have to match the blouse or the shoes or something. <laughs> I'm going to get glass. I like just like how glasses look, so I'm going to be one of the guys that has no frames in them or no... Uh, no lenses. No lens in them. Just cool frames wearing them around. <laughs> you can do that. Glasses are awesome. Um, so straight into, was it that what you wanted to do, the optician? Or it's just what you fell into? Or how did you? It's what? just what I fell into, actually. Okay. Um, just interviewed really well. I was only 19. Okay. You know, so I didn't have a. Kids, so it was like, yeah, yeah, and not a whole lot of work experience. Right. So um, it was an excellent opportunity. And, okay. and I really learned a lot and was an apprentice to um, a gal who'd been doing it for years, who is still one of my very best friends. Okay. Um, then from there, I did that for about 20 years. Okay. Yeah. So it's amazing you fell into something that you loved, really, right? Like you love glasses. So I had no idea that I would. I had right. never needed them, uh -huh. so it, it was all new to me. And um, you know, there was really a lot to learn. And mm -hmm. you know, I started out selling, and then fixing, and ordering, and troubleshooting, and okay. and eventually I was making them in the lab. So okay, it was really cool how far I could progress and, and what all you could do with it. Did you do college for it or anything like that, or you just solely job experience through it? Throughout? Being an apprentice, it's all on the job training. Okay, that's one of the things that I like to focus on. Is I'm a big believer in college isn't for everybody, right? It's it's whatever. Like so if you want to be an engineer or a doctor. You should probably go to college, right? <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> but there's other entrepreneurial things, which is what I normally focus on, that you don't necessarily have to go to college. Like right. sometimes you're better off going to somebody and working for free or starting at a low level job and fetching people coffee in an industry that you like because then you're gonna learn things slowly, right? And you're gonna build throughout that, which is exactly what you did, right? Yeah. So you did it for 20 years and then you quit? Um, well, then I. So I was managing a practice in Peters Creek and had a job opportunity come around that I never expected to be a marketer okay. uh, for a sleep center. And it was something okay. totally different than I had ever done. And it was fantastic because rather than being stuck in an office all day, mm -hmm. especially in the winter, I mm -hmm. was out on the road all That's day long. Nice. So yeah. maximum exposure to sunshine in our limited winter months. Right. Um, Sign but, me up. That's all yeah, you have to say. <laughs> exactly. You know, meeting new people, making new friends, and mm -hmm. that's something that I've always been good at. So mm -hmm. um, it just seemed kind of the natural extension. And I learned a lot about sleep apnea and okay. um, how it's treated and how it can save lives. So okay. it really um, was not only fascinating, but it also rolled over, over over into my family life. Okay. I've actually, um, I've lost somebody to undiagnosed sleep apnea. Yeah. So huh. I'm still very involved in the sleep industry and, and very, very passionate about, okay. you know, teaching people what it's, what it's about and how it can really turn their lives around. It's one of those things right now that's like, it's gaining steam now. Like we're just now realizing how big of a problem it is. I mean, my dad and my brother both have sleep apnea and have the whole CPAP machine and everything like sure. that. And so I have uncles and stuff like that. So it's definitely something that's growing way, way more. Is that something you see too? Way, way more. Absolutely. There's a has. lot more information out there about it. It used to be, uh, you know, they didn't think about sleep apnea in healthy people. It was mm -hmm. mostly, you know, overweight guys who are driving all the time and maybe not eating the best foods right. and don't have the best sleep habits. Um, but as we learn more and more about it, we've realized that one out of two women postmenopausal will develop sleep apnea. It's hormonal imbalances wow. yeah. and there's just so much. So, yeah. you know, for anybody who has any trouble sleeping or, or, you know, staying asleep or who just has maybe never felt like a morning person, mm -hmm. it, is definitely something to discuss with your doctor and find into. out more. Yeah. Absolutely. And now I even had it done when I got out of the military. They just give you like there's a little at home test you wear it around your wrist and put it on your finger and send it back in and they're like, Yep. Or you should come in and get more studies. It's just like a super easy, like passive, like, hey, I'm gonna try this out and they can send you home and right. like, no it's not the whole like day and a half off to go to a sleep study to get all kinds <laughs> of craziness, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, and home sleep testing is not necessarily the, the best route, but what it does do is it gives an idea what your oxygen levels are. Right. And if your oxygen levels are dropping through the night, then that's an indicator mm -hmm. that there's something more going on right. and that you should have an in-lab study. Right. So. Um, 
So that opportunity, was that coming out of your network? Like it's just people you knew and they were like, hey, you're amazing, we want you to be here? Exactly. I feel like this is a common part of your life. <laughs> like you fell into optician and it was like, hey, this is an opportunity because you're amazing. And then this yeah. is an opportunity, right? Now you're on a, the uh, acapella group because you're amazing, right? It's just all networking and a good <laughs> See, personality. See, it all fits together. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I was with the Sleep Center for six or seven years um, okay. and doing the marketing. So promotional products, obviously, <laughs> um, and and just going out promoting, you know, what we do and, and how we can help, specifically in doctor's offices, but okay. also some community outreach. Mm-hmm. Um, after I felt like I had maybe served my purpose there and, okay. and it was time to move on, promotional products was the most... Uh, natural thing because I'd been using them so much right um, I went down to Las Vegas to the promotional products Ooh. expo down there I was a Vegas virgin so the whole thing Perfect. was an that's, experience that's, to say the least that's where I'm from so I always Is it really? that up. yep oh wow yep. right on yeah it's a it's an interesting place well nobody it's, puts on a party like Vegas does no so to walk in to the, the expos at the Mandalay Bay and all of their conference rooms are cram packed yeah. with vendors yep. and samples yep. and just the coolest stuff that I had never even dreamed of. Yeah. It's amazing to me how many different everyday products you can put your logo on to yeah. promote your business or your message. Yeah. So. That's the one of my favorite things about about Vegas is everyone's what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? And it's the whole party scene, but there is so many more concerts and conferences and architecture and like there's a million things that happen in Vegas that's not around the party scene like that's just the nightlife but there's so much more that that place has turned into and those conferences are at the Mandalay Bay I know exactly what conference center you're talking about and it's just big and packed and spacious and amazing right so you went you were still working for the sleep center when you went to this conference I was just transitioning out okay and so Wild Iris, is that like a franchise or it's like your own company? It or how is did my you... own. Okay. Yep. I started it up in my front yard while I was tending the irises in my garden one day. And it just... Perfect. Ooh, if I was going to do anything, this is what it would be. And, uh-huh. yeah. and so the name, <laughs> the name fell right into it. The business plan fell right into it. Just like comply with... Man, I'm going to mess up your name a million times. I don't know why I can't... You haven't messed it up once, actually. <laughs> You're one of the rare few who pronounced it right on the first try. So Now I, I don't want to mess that up. So I'm like, I'm nervous. Like, no. <laughs> so well, everything seems like it's just falling right into place, right? Like you're not forcing everything. It's just like, hey, this if I were going to do anything, this is what I would do. That's how it feels. And that's, I mean, that's what's so exciting about it all. I'm not having to force anything. I'm not doing something that I don't enjoy, hoping that something better will come along. Something better came along, and I Mm. took the bull by the horns and and I'm trying to run with it. And because of all of the networking that I've done just with Wild Iris, Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I fell into both the choir Mm -hmm. and the travel opportunity. So you're, it, I, w- I want to scream from the top of my lungs right now because your story is exactly like if I could share one thing with the world, like a hundred percent, like make sure everyone does this, it's to not follow money or anything else, but to just go for happiness, right? Like money's not the factor. Happiness is the factor. What would your decision be? Do that thing. Absolutely. Right? And it sounds like that's exactly what you've done all the way through all of this. Like you just stumbled into optician, but you loved it. And now you've just followed your passion and your love throughout everything else that you're doing now. Sure. And it absolutely shows in your personality too. I have to assume the money will follow the happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope. <laughs> Starting a business is scary. It it was terrifying. Right. Absolutely terrifying. And you know, I could not have done it without the support of my family and my friends mm-hmm. and you know, and then meeting all of these spectacular other people that are struggling the same way I was, right. you know, trying to get the word out and build mm-hmm. a business that means something to them. Um, and my business being what it is, I'm in a position to help other people mm-hmm. who are going through the same things that I went through. So okay. that's where I get um, a lot of fulfillment in what I'm doing is being able to find the right product for the right mm-hmm. person at the right time and and absolutely maximize their marketing budget, yep. you know, by mm-hmm. bringing in something that is high quality and is going to attract the clientele that they're looking for. Right. 
So. So do you? Are you back there sewing stuff on handbags and stuff yourself? Nope. Or do you have a sewing machine? Or, <laughs> or how does this work? <laughs> so essentially, I'm a distributor for multiple companies. Okay. Um, Bic is one of my top suppliers. Okay. I use them a lot for pens and mm. um, notepads and other things that they supply. But there are literally thousands of suppliers mm -hmm. in the promotional products industry. Um, so it's taken me the better part of this last year and a half mm. to kind of utilize each one and right. see how it all works out. Mm -hmm. Who will back me up? Mm -hmm. If there's an error, and who won't, right. um, who will ship in Jordan the most Asia. economical <laughs> way possible for uh -huh. us? Um, you know, there are several suppliers that have got great products, but they'll only ship FedEx, mm -hmm. and that's just out there for us. Yeah, you know, so trying to work with suppliers who either will ship for free, which mm -hmm. is always a bonus. Or, Especially to Alaska. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's the biggest obstacle in, uh -huh. in my industry as as well as several others. Mm -hmm. So there is some stuff that I can do um, on hand, but most of it is done by the suppliers and, okay. and then just shipped through me. And I like to have them ship it directly to me mm -hmm. so I can open the box and make sure that what you ordered is correct before... Okay. Perfect. It ends yeah. up on like your a, desk, like right? Like a QC kind of quality control kind of thing. Like absolutely. Make sure you're getting what you want and it's to the quality that you expect. Yeah, right? absolutely. And there have been instances where things have come back and they've been incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, I just had one recently that uh, the gentleman didn't want his website on the pens. Okay. And that was overlooked mm -hmm. by the supplier. Mm -hmm. And so they printed the website on there. No harm done because mm -hmm. the website is active and valid, but still not what he asked for. Right. Um, so before I even talked to him, I was in contact with the supplier. Mm -hmm. They remade them and shipped them at no charge. So right. now instead of a thousand pens, he's got two thousand pens. Right. Just have <laughs> some website that still works. Absolutely, they'll all write, and mm -hmm. that's just that much more exposure. Right. So. So. We'll get into the the whole if you want wild lives promotion stuff like that at the end. So watch to the end and you'll get all that information, <laughs> right? It's a stick to make and keep watching. So that's it sounds like you haven't been doing that for very long. About a My, year and a half. Okay. And yeah. has it been successful so far? Yes it has. Okay. Yes it has. Um and how are you driving well driving growth is the super like technical term for it, but how are you getting every customer you get? Is it, are you using the social media? Is it networking or what's the, what's your main source? I don't use the social media to the extent that I should be. Okay. Um, and what has been easiest for me as far as Facebook goes is more product related stuff rather than personal stuff okay. because there are thousands of different products. Uh -huh. Um, primarily it's been the networking, um, mm -hmm. I met a gal at an event, uh, her name is Trish, and she invited me to the Alaska Referral Network. Okay. Uh, so I started going to their meetings. Those are in Anchorage on Wednesdays. Okay. From there, I was introduced to the Matsu Business Breakfast with Maria okay. Doni. Yep. And um, those were my two primary groups for a while, mm -hmm. um, but now there's Powerhouse Professionals, which I've been fortunate enough to be a part of okay. um, and I am now a mentor coordinator with BNI okay okay so really you drove growth in your business by connecting with other businesses. absolutely that's exactly one what I'm trying to do right because that's that's the Alaskan community we're set aside so far from the rest of the lower 48 here yeah. that it's so strong and a lot of people like love to support the local businesses Right, so that's exactly what I'm trying to do, and so I'm gonna follow. I'm gonna ask you more questions about it off camera, so that way I can do what you're doing. Sure. But okay, so you how you said you're not really using social media. It's pretty much all. Do you have a website too? I do. Okay. And I do. Do you get a lot of business from your website, or is that not just, necessarily? But okay. it's a good starting point. If if you know what you're looking for, mm -hmm. it's easier for you to go on my website and find exactly what you're looking for, right. rather than tell me and I might find everything except exactly what you're looking for. Okay. So it's it's a good reference point to start with. Right. Um, but then I like to work with people one to one to make sure that they're really getting right. the maximum value and a quality product that people aren't going to pick up off their table 
and just throw in the garbage. I'm sure you're exactly <laughs> like we are, where it's like, that's what you think you want. Now let me show you what you actually want, right? When, right. when it comes to price and like this many bedrooms and bathrooms and stuff like that, like, yeah, that's probably close, but this is going to work better for you. And only you know that because you're working with all the suppliers and you know where the quality lies. Exactly. Right? Man. Okay. <laughs> so while I was promotions has been a year and a half, what about this come fly with Tearstar? I literally just got that started last week. Tell me about it. All right. <laughs> so it's um, it's an opportunity based on travel agency pricing. You'll notice that there aren't a lot of travel agencies around anymore. Right. Brick and mortar stores right. are slowly disappearing and, and more and more people are working from home. Um, when you can keep those costs down, you can offer better deals and, and more savings. Right. So this is essentially, I can give you a gift okay. of a free membership to this website okay. that's going to save you between 20 and 35% on your travel. Okay. And that's on everything from uh, rental cars, hotels, mm -hmm. um, homes, if you want to stay in a in a home in Italy versus a hotel. Like Airbnb kind of thing? Absolutely. Okay. Um, cruises, vacation packages, uh, your, your Disney tickets, all of these kinds of things are okay. all accessible through just this one website. Mm -hmm. um, you can book your airfare through it as well, but there's not a lot of... Not a lot of wiggle room in airfare, right. um, so that's that's not where the savings are. Um, so I encourage people go ahead and use your Alaska Airlines miles, book right. directly through them, but then just use you this know, for all the other use this for everything expenses. else. Okay. And what I have found looking at it personally is that you know if you're if you're planning on staying in a three star hotel that's normally a hundred bucks a night, mm -hmm. let's just say. Um, then my price on it is about 80 to 85 bucks. But okay. if you're looking to stay in a five-star hotel that runs, you know, regularly 280 bucks a night, mm -hmm. I can get you in for about 200. So okay. the uh, the higher priced items have the maximum savings, of Makes course, sense, right. which is the same in just about every industry, right. Right? right? For promotional products, the higher the quantity, the less expensive they become. Right. Even like land, everything. You buy more, you're going to pay less. Exactly. In almost everything, right? Yeah. Okay. And so how did, you said you got into that because of the acapella group kind of thing? Right? Um, well, the... So I met a gentleman in my Alaska referral networking group, okay. um, and he was introduced to this by someone that he has known for 20 years, okay. um, who just started this up. This just launched in okay. March, so it's a brand new, uh, a brand new service. It's actually called iBoomerang. Okay. So, um, because we've spent the last year and a half kind of getting to know each other, and mm -hmm. I know like and trust him mm -hmm. uh, you know the whole point to networking hard yeah. um, it was a really easy decision um, to go ahead and and do something like this it's not yeah. something I ever imagined mm -hmm. that I would do but I think opportunity tends to fall in your lap when you're least expecting it and right. I had kind of put all my eggs in the promotional products basket mm -hmm. um, and, and while I'm building the business and it is going very well, multiple streams of income, I think, is a smarter way to go. 100%. Yeah. yeah. The, the more you're doing, the more, number one, the more money you'll make, but, uh -huh. but the more you'll be able to do. My promotional products business will help the travel business right. and vice versa. Right, right, right. Uh, I can't remember who said it or where I heard this. Um, but it was someone was way smarter than I am. And they said they did a study of like the, the most wealthy, wealthy people in America. And the average number of incomes or sources of income for those wealthy people is seven. Oh my gosh. So, so like people think like you're a millionaire. You're, you don't have one job paying you a million dollars though. You have one job that's maybe paying you $100,000. Then you have some real estate. Then you have this, then this, then this, then this. And all of that collectively make you a millionaire. Right. It's not just one spot. You don't have to run a million dollar business to get to that point. Right, and then jumping back on my thesis, I wish I could scream to the world: <laughs> happiness. If you like, you follow these seven things, and all seven of these things make you happy. Like the promotional products, like the travel, like the acapella group, like all three of those things are making you happy, and you're probably going to make a little bit of money off of each one, right? Maybe not. Are you making money off the acapella group? You're just um, down to pure. Yes and no. We're actually working on some uh, some swag. For the group. Okay. Yeah. So all tying together again. So it all Look ties, at that. It all ties Man, in. Man, I wish we could draw this in a map because I think it would be like a beautiful little circle. 
Like it's all tiny or just chaos, right? Because everything <laughs> <laughs> one of the two. Okay. Um, so then let's get into that last thing. Tell me more about that acapella group. You said you sang before, now you are in an international acapella group. It just sounds amazing to say. It's so, I'll have to get honestly, <laughs> <laughs> it's all I've ever wanted to do. I have mm-hmm. been singing since I was 18 months old. Yep. Um, it is literally all I ever wanted to do. And of course, as you grow up, you realize that there are some things that aren't going to happen, right? right? I mean, I'm never going to, a lot of things. Um, but then again. I would argue. I would, I would <laughs> right. challenge you on that one. <laughs> well, what I can honestly tell you is I would not be doing this had I not started my business. Yep. The, the confidence that I have gained mm-hmm. from having to network and promote my business yep. and come out of my shell and, mm-hmm. and get to know people um, is really what gave me the confidence to even be a guest of the choirs, let yep. alone to audition on right. my own and right. become a part of it. Um, when I was little growing up, I very entrepreneurial from a young age. I okay. would walk around my neighborhood with my wagon full of goodies, selling my stickers and my, okay. you know, my little handmade doodads or whatever all around the block. My dad was a salesman, so it just came naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, but so did the singing. And, you know, it, it took me a while to to realize that there was an even an opportunity right. like this. I had no idea. Uh, but being a part of the powerhouse professionals group, mm-hmm. when we did our Christmas party in December, they invited um, Vocalocity Quartet okay. to come and perform for us. Okay. So these four lovely gals came and performed some Christmas music for us, and it literally brought me to tears. I mean, just okay. the the passion mm-hmm. and the love of singing that mm-hmm. you can see so clearly when they're doing it attracted me instantly. Right. And I gave it some thought and thought some more and thought some more and uh-huh. finally decided that it was something I had to do. Right. Um, so I went in just to observe. Uh-huh. <laughs> just to watch. <laughs> just to watch. Uh-huh. And um, honestly, walking into that room full of women... I, I was totally intimidated at first, but they mm-hmm. have been so welcoming mm-hmm. and so sweet and so excited that I wanted to be a part of it that, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just been all open arms. Yeah. So. That is amazing. And I want to roll back a little bit just because I said I was going to challenge you, so I want to. Uh, you said there's like, you get older and there's some things you realize just aren't going to happen. I would say patience, right? Like you, you went through all of this stuff. You've been singing for 18 months and you went through all this other stuff. And then it came up, right? You had to build the confidence or build the business or whatever. Like there's different steps different people are going to take. But people nowadays are living a long time. Sure. You know what I mean? The average life expectancy is only growing. I think it went down a little bit recently. But it's only growing, right? Like it's not unexpected for the people, like for you and my generation and the next generation to be average living 90 to 100 years old. Right. That means at 50, you're at, you're at halftime. Right? <laughs> right, right. That's it. You still. That's you're only halfway through. You still have all this time to do or build or what follow whatever passion you want. Right. Like um, who's the Tara Wang? Wasn't she like seventy when she started some a fashion industry? Uh, yeah, Vera Wang. Vera oh. Wang. Oh. Yeah, I can't remember what brand she did. It's like Gucci or something like that. And she was like seventy when they started or when she started it. Now look at Gucci. Like, you just have to be patient and then you have to have the confidence to follow your passion. Then yeah. I think really anything. Anything is, um, I'm, I'm missing the word, what is it, achievable. Absolutely. That seems like a good one, huh? <laughs> it is. It is a good one. I, had I known this would be where I ended up, mm-hmm. maybe I would have taken a different path. Mm-hmm. Um, in high school, we went for an international competition over mm-hmm. in Hawaii, and mm-hmm. I choked. I had mm-hmm. a solo, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the, the climate over there is different. It's humid and it's uh-huh. different and my voice cracked. And so I pretty much made up my mind never again. So you choked <laughs> like you didn't sing or you just didn't sing? Oh, no, I sang, wanted? but I missed the last note. <laughs> okay, like the, the final one that's supposed oh, to yeah. like stick it tight. You're like, exactly, you I'm like, like <laughs> it's gone. Okay. So any confidence I ever had in singing was mm. absolutely blown at that point. Uh-huh. Um, so I really never thought it was something that I would um, 
you know, strive to do on a regular basis other mm-hmm. than in the car and in the shower where I'm a rock star. Uh-huh. Um, so finding that opportunity, you know, mm-hmm. and, and having these ladies be just so happy to have me there. And, right. you know, I mean, they're all about building each other up. Mm-hmm. Um, and we all need a little bit more of that in our lives. People, social media is a great example. People are all too eager to find the negative or to tear other people down. And so to find a situation where they want nothing more than to see me succeed, I can't help but love it. I think that's 100% even on social media. Like you're going to find whatever you want to find, right? You sure. could have found an acapella group or in the same acapella group, you could find some negative, I'm sure. Same thing on social media. You just have to look for the positive. You have to look for those people to build yourself up. And then, I mean, look at you. Like, you can tell just, I saw your energy change, like, when you started talking about it. Like, it's definitely, <laughs> like, it's definitely where you wanted to be and where you're the happiest. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. How do you feel, feel about singing the national anthem? Um, actually, I love it. Um, I, I was volunteered to do so at a, at a golf um, a golf tournament last week, and I, I am not ready for something like that. To be totally honest, how 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 long do you need to be ready? <laughs> what, do you, what do you want from me here? July nineteenth, <laughs> Keller Williams is having a golf invitational supporting the Children's Place of Alaska. Yeah, actually, I talked to Kaylee about that because uh-huh. if it's something that even one of the quartets could perform, or uh-huh. we have a group of maybe twelve or fifteen ladies who perform the national anthem at baseball games and stuff in Anchorage that would be amazing. and I, I would love to have yeah. the opportunity for the choir to to be able to do that yeah. I'm much more comfortable at this point uh-huh. you know having some backup singers uh-huh. <laughs> not, not solo you would have we'll, we'll not just it. yet and especially I, I'm not ready to take on a complicated piece like that all on my own uh-huh. and you know crack again in front of who knows who but okay. but yeah I'm I'm hoping to be able to get the choir involved yeah with we'll, that. we'll have to work that out yeah. yeah, that would be that would be amazing, right? <laughs> well, and we'll get that on the live too, so that way, well, it's already on the live, but we'll get that on another video so people can follow up and see you singing. Absolutely. Unless you want to finish this off with a song, I won't. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, okay. So, is there anything else that you wanted to say about any of your businesses? Is there anything that we missed or skipped over? Or some oh theme gosh, or... not really. Not okay. that I can think of. You know, the most the most important aspect of of starting a business and growing it is to be open to that continual growth. Mm-hmm. You know, reading reading articles. I read a great article this morning on um, training your brain to think more positively than negatively. Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. automatically conditioned kind of to see the negative in things, but mm-hmm. to retrain your brain to see more positive aspects can only lead to more positive growth. Right. So that's that's where I'm at is just trying to um, remember every day to be thankful mm-hmm. for the challenges that I've had because right. had I not had them, I wouldn't be where I am. Right. Um, to be thankful for the people and the things in my life that have supported me to this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just to focus on all of the positive things. There's plenty of negativity you can focus on. You know, there's a cloud in the sky. And, mm-hmm. and for somebody... That's the most important thing that they're seeing right now. Not right. all of the blue, but that one little cloud. Right. And I'm all about the blue. <laughs> right, right. There's always positive in everything, everything you find. You just have to choose to see it that way. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to expand a little bit. You said always being open to the growth. You're a prime example of that because anybody who started a business knows that in the first two years, you are swamped, especially if you've never started a business before and you're learning all these new things. You're only a year and a half into Wild Irish Promotions, and then you found another opportunity, two really two other opportunities, and you jumped on both of them just because you're open to that growth in business and personally, Yeah. right? So always being open to that. And like I said, once you started talking about the choir thing, your energy completely changed. So that's, <laughs> like, that's the most important thing, and it's super good that you were, because there's, I mean, who who's to know that if you were in still being an optician or anything like that? If you would have taken that opportunity, right. you know, I mean, you would have networked, so you might not even have known the opportunity. Exactly. So that's super awesome. <laughs> um, I just I feel like everything is coming full circle. It's mm-hmm. easy to get discouraged, especially with my business being new. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it takes three to five years to really ensconce yourself in in a small business, and right. um, to have these other opportunities that help to build that up mm-hmm. has been a fantastic thing for me. Right. Right. So. 
Okay, where do we find all of all of these things? So we'll start with Wild Iris, Facebook, Instagram, website. Do you have all of those things? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and my website is wildirispromotions.com. Okay. Um, every product that I offer is on my website. Um, it's easiest to work through me because I can get you a good shipping quote and make okay. sure that we're getting you know, the best deal for you. But if you're looking for something specific, the website is a great place to start. Okay. Um, with the travel business, talk to me. Um, I did start a Facebook page just mm -hmm. this week, Come Fly with Tirsa. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested, if you do a lot of traveling and you'd like to save anywhere between 15 and 35%, mm -hmm. I'm your girl. Come talk to me, reach out to me through Facebook or give me a call. Um, mm -hmm. And I am happy to sit down with anybody and let them know not only how they can save money, mm -hmm. but how they can potentially make money the okay. same way I am through okay. this travel company. Okay. And then, well, you stop. You stop too early. With well, the most important thing, what if we want to see you perform? Where do we? Where so, do we do this? so the the process that I'm in right now, I have to. Um, I've got to learn the songs and the choreography before yep. I'm actually allowed to perform with the choir. Okay. Um, the fair is the first uh, real performance that I'm aware of, and I okay. should definitely be checked off by then. Okay. Um, hoping to go to New Orleans for internationals in September. Okay. So I've got a lot of work to do, um, but that is the goal. As I learn more about it, I will know more when some other performances are. Okay. Um, every month at the immigration and naturalization ceremonies, mm -hmm. a group of the gals sings um, some patriotic songs okay. there. Um, so that might be something that I'm able to become a part of too. Okay. So. so the fair, do you have like a, a date for the fair? I know nothing the, at this point. What about just the name? <laughs> Is it... What what would be like the name of the the performers? Alaska Sound Celebration. Okay, so yeah. when they start to look at the the itinerary for the fair, if you will, they see Alaska Sound performers. They can expect you to see absolutely to be there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll be there. Okay, um, so we're gonna do. Is there anything else that we missed? Anything at all that you like that you had in the back of your wow. brain? If not, there's there's the last thing I told you about the question. Right. Question of the day, if you will. But before we get to that, was there something that you wanted to talk about or a business stick or anything that you wanted to throw in there just to solidify? I think we've covered most of the bases, so okay. I'm ready for the... All right. So, like I said, <laughs> hopefully, I mean, you're amazing, so we're going to get more than a thousand, but we'll call it a thousand people all right. are going to watch this video. If you can ask all of those thousand people one question about what they're thinking or about the current current state of anything, what would that question be? Talk to the people. I suppose I want to know what your favorite promotional products are. Um, promotional products have a great top of mind awareness. People tend to keep them for up to two years mm -hmm. and can usually remember where they got them and who the company was that they got their favorite promotional product from. So um, that would be my question. And of course, because there are thousands of different products, there's thousands of different answers. Right. And that's what makes it so much fun because some people prefer pens, some people prefer carabiners, some people prefer water bottles. So mm -hmm. it's it's fun to see you know, who likes what and, okay. and how they prefer to promote their business and mm -hmm. what has been successful for them in the past. So what's your favorite promotional item? Go on Wild Iris Promotions, like the Facebook page, don't be a dick, and then <laughs> comment or message on the Facebook page, whatever you want, and just, you don't have to put any context behind it. Just go on our Facebook page and write pens or water bottles and she'll know what you're talking about. Absolutely. Right? There it is. Thank you for doing this. Oh, let's, thank you so much. high five, let's make it crisp. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. This Wild is Iris fun. Promotions, fly with, come fly with Tirsa, or what's Dr. Pella Group's name? One more time. Alaska finish. Sound Celebration Choir. There it is. Let's finish it with that. You hit, <laughs> hit finish for me on there. We'll do. And I hit this one. <laughs>